Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux open source. I'm Vin, that's Jill, that's you watching us in front of a live studio audience online because, yeah, remote viewing, that's how we do it these days. Kind of have everyone yeah. in one place. <laughs> However, it goes down quite a bit to talk about this week. A couple of fun little stories. But, Jill, you got to play some track media with us last night because that's something we do on Tuesdays. It was pretty yeah. fun, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the maps, maps yesterday. I uh, think, and, and the one where we discovered a, a new way, a new goal <laughs> to to get through the map faster. That was cool. <laughs> if you were tuning in, the best part on Tuesdays we load up fourteen new tracks, and it's a mixture of things, and it's physics platforming, and it puzzles exploration. And the first map is always uh, what they call an LOL map, which is just mm -hmm. fun. It's silly. You know, it's got springs yeah. on it or something, you know. And I'd found one. And we have a private server, and I'm able to run a front end on that, which tells us, you know, there's an internet database of all the times. So we're, like, looking at our times, and we had already been through all the maps, and we're back on that first map, getting ready to call it a night. I'm like, all right, let's do this map one more time. And I think we were, like... The best we could do on this map was 14 seconds, but the data mania, which is the you know internet record keeping, was like nine. Nine, yeah. <laughs> so like right at the end, I'm like, who's gonna find the skip? There's gotta be a skip on here. Then instead of racing, that all turned everyone crawling around in the grass and yeah. we're out exploring and it was kind of fun. Uh it was like a team effort to we we found the alternate ending then we had to work a way to get to it and we had one way that kind of could get to it then we found alan found the correct way of like bouncing off of a podium that spun the car into a little hole that was hidden mm -hmm. <laughs> welcome to track mania that's yeah, why we play it part of the fun. <laughs> for like weird stuff like that it is not a conventional racing game and if you're like us you're getting on in years and you want to work on that hand-eye coordination you want to use your brain you need to think ahead and new challenges each week you can do it each and every week. Uh, we'll be back Friday for rounds matches. And yeah, that's on our yeah. Discord. If you're a Twitch sub or a patron, everything's been in the Trek Manias in, in Discord. Come hang out with us. It's a fun, fun group. And I have faith in Beastfic that he'll figure out how to get the locator file for his custom car skins. We'll, <laughs> yes. we'll know <laughs> if there was success by whether or not Ogie has a uh, custom car by this Friday. We'll, yes. we'll find out. <laughs> and last Friday was really challenging. We had some very challenging maps. I, I told was, every single one yeah. of them. Yeah, and I'm, I am I did practice quite a bit, so I, I placed pretty high on a couple of the ones that other people didn't get through, so I'm happy. <laughs> there were, um, I told people, I told people, I told people last Tuesday, I said, if you do not put serious time into some of these maps, you're not going to finish. Yeah. There were people on Friday that didn't finish maps. But mm -hmm. that's how it is uh, sometimes. Now, unfortunately, next week, it's all going to be dirt because that's what Jill has insisted oh, on. Oh, no. <laughs> I made a joke. And now Ben's like, no, I'm going <laughs> to, because of what you said, because I, I only said I like the dirt tracks now more than I used to. <laughs> and I mean, now he's like, nope, now we're going to have all dirt maps. <laughs> It's recorded. You can go back and watch the VOD if you want. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing but dirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> by the way, our audio stack is currently running on Debian testing. I did that day before yesterday. I was able to test that out during the Trackmania stream. It was kind nice. of fun. Painless. Painless. Uh, Debian 11. Now, admittedly, there's not a lot of software running on Jackbox. Uh, barely, you know, X. And that's about it. Jack back in RT kernel. But yeah, I mean, you go into your app sources and you just swap everything from bullseye to testing. You say, do that thing, do the update. And main reason I did it is because I wanted to play around with some of the newer stuff because I have that uh, 5600G in there. And I'm like, yeah, let's see if it improves anything. Didn't really change anything. But yeah, that I, I love a nice smooth upgrade like that. And uh, I'm going to let this one track testing for a little while because it's getting to that point and the if you've been using debian 
in the life cycle of Debian 11, and we've probably got another year and a half, possibly two years before we're going to see Debian 12, to restart playing around with testing. Like, eh, let's see, I'm going to start moving things on because things are starting to get a little bit old. But I did get a new thing, and as always, if it's a weird piece of audio equipment, fate has some strange, cruel joke of insisting. <laughs> giving it to Ben. <laughs> that it's going to be blue. Yes. Can't help it. It's a true story. I got another thing, and it's even vintage. I mean, this comes from a uh, time of the 70s. That's right. I cracked the lid, and it smelled of Scandinavian witchcraft and high karate. Um, this is the Orban Dynamic Sibilance Controller. Currently using it right now. It's a DSer, and I'm not fascinated by a DS or DS or DS or what I was fascinated about is in 526A was that it's dynamic. And dynamic means that it's got some smarts in it, which had my interest. This is how my brain works. I'm like, all right. I look it up, I find the schematics, and I'm like, yes, this is a, yet another analog computer in the rack. And it is doing, you know, it's just using some op amps. There's no integrated circuits in here doing anything uh, for calculation, but it's able to, you know, to store voltages and stuff like that. So I'm trying it out. Trying it out. Seems to be working. It could explode. I need to go back and uh, replace all the electrolytics in it. Uh, Nothing's bad, but everything in there is from like 1978. So probably need to change that out. Uh, It does have a little bit of a claim to fame, though, because... I, I just call it the blue thing. It was used on the Thriller album. Yay, Michael Jackson's things. Thriller. Uh, <laughs> there it is, being all blue, making blue thing noises down it's the bottom. It's close to midnight. And it's going to be interesting <laughs> to actually run it through a live session like this uh, as a DS or if you've ever dealt with like DSing because they have the effects compeller, which is a hissy, hissy boy. It really likes to generate extra snake jazz. But it's also another analog computer that's just amazing in how it works. And if you ever notice, like when you listen to our live streams, we're not loud. Like we're not clipping, but we're loud. We got plenty of energy. And that's part of the secret of that. We needed something at the end of the chain. Now, when it's just like me, uh, Pedro or Tihan or Jordan, that's not a big deal. You can kind of set it and forget it. Hard mode. It's me and Jill because we S at... um, Guys and gals, we have different frequencies we S at, which is something you might not know. If you just take a regular DSer, uh, dude's going to be usually between like 55, 50, well, you know, 52, 55, maybe down to four. Uh, Jill, uh, you're going to be starting like somewhere around 56 to 6,000 is the typical S frequency. So I'm curious if Blue Thing is smart enough to be able to handle both of us. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I think that'll be a interesting test. I'll probably, I might do a little video about this guy. I don't know. It's not really Linux related, but who knows? Maybe I'll do like a DSing plugin comparison or whatever. One last little bit of note. If you've ever been looking for hardware, I'm bringing this up because uh, somebody asked me last week. And they're like, hey, Vin. And this was during Trackmania. Like, what microphone do you use? To which I said, which one? <laughs> I have a lot of microphones. And I thought about that. I'm like, you know, just go over to the Amazon list, which could be kind of confusing because while I do have an itemized list of everything in the studio, including all the hardware, it it was not ordered. It was just in date of purchase, which means it was just scattershot. So if you have been curious about that, LinuxGameCast.com, we'll, we'll do this as a team. We're going to hover over about mm-hmm. their staff. We're going to go down to studio equipment. We're going to click that. This is now organized, and I'll show you what I mean by that. We have audio, all the pie stuff, all the video, office chairs, networking, electric, storage, lighting, display, PCs. But if we go to audio, or like anything else, all the headphones are in one section, all the microphones are in one section, (laughs) all the capture audio cards, all the audio interfaces, and so on, and control surfaces, microphone preamps, and mixers, all of it's organized. So you don't have to do scattershot. You're like, hey, I'm looking for headphones, or hey, I'm looking for that. And I know what you're thinking. Then you're trying to trick me into buying stuff on Amazon. No. Buy the stuff used. Go to Guitar Center's use segment. 
find what you want, go there and buy it like that. This is just an easy way to find it. There we go. Nice there fan. We That's awesome. Go. Happy 31st birthday. Oh, man. You know, somebody is oh, like, wow. man, I can't believe I'm going to be 31 next year. I feel so old while I will go, <laughs> man, I barely remember being 31. Yeah, yeah, same here, Ben. So this month has actually been a really busy month uh, for Linux software birthdays, including Debian turning 29 and GNOME turning 25. And last week we covered the X Screensaver software turning 30. And this uh, makes me feel even older, actually. So last Thursday on August 25th, Linux turned 31 years old. Woohoo! Hooray! I even wore my Linux 91 shirt in celebration. <laughs> so it was on August 25th, 1991, when 21 year old Finnish student Linus Benedict Torvalds made his now famous announcement in the comp.os.minix newsgroup that he's working on a free operating system for 386, 486 AT clones. And it's just a, just a hobby. So here, here's the exact quote for those of you who have never heard this very famous and well-known uh, quote from Linus. He says, Hello, everyone, everybody out there using Minix. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby, won't be big and professional like GNU, for 386, 486 AT clones. This has been brewing since April and is starting to get ready. I'd like any feedback on things people like or dislike in Minix, as my OS resembles it somewhat. Same physical layout of the file system due to practical reasons, among other things. And this is just a, a short version of, of that full email. So it's, it's definitely worth a read, especially if you haven't read it before. And it, 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 it demonstrates Linux's humble beginnings <laughs> from Linus himself. Very humble. <laughs> well, you don't, and look where we're at today. You, know, you Linux can never runs plan the world. <laughs> these things out. And it's always amazing yeah. when you go back and read that initial announcement of like, hey, I'm going to release something. I, I like Minix. I'm going to clone Minix. And this is going yeah. to be something to play with. And I always keep try. I try. I genuinely try to keep that in mind when I see you know, lofty announcements of, you know, somebody's hobby project of like, hey, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And like, could this be the next Linux type thing? You know, is this something we're going to be talking about in 30 years from now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of amazing um, from what it's grown from. And you got to be careful with things like this. You never expect, uh, I was talking in the pre-show, just kind of bringing that up, the one of the first talks that Linux gave, uh, Linus gave, oh, um, yeah. yeah, that was like recently and covered this year that I got to go back and finish cleaning the audio upon, which is just like a fascinating talk because it, it, it's young baby Linux yeah. talking, you know, <laughs> and he's like very nervous. Like, I don't, you know, it was very much like he, he was like, I have no idea why you guys invited me to come yeah. talk. <laughs> and that was really fun. It, it, it's, it's just an amazing story. And, you know, that really helped bring a lot of people over to, you know, learning about open source and, uh, you know, running an operating system that's not a black box. Yeah, absolutely. And, is, and, you know, it also demonstrates about how Linus, you know, wants to be treated. He doesn't want to be treated like Bill Gates. He doesn't, you know, he just, he's very humble and always has been. He's a developer and coder at heart. And likes to be quiet, you know, in his room coding with lot, not a lot, lot of, uh, you know, things in his way and, and interruptions. So you can respect that. So he's, he's definitely, he's an amazing person. <laughs> I think he's an okay human being. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, even Linus is like, hey, some things I need to work on. You know, you got you to work on that uh, compatibility layer with people who are just, you know, really interested in trying to waste your time. And I, I'm 100% with Linus on that. I'm like snapping back at people who just, you know, didn't RTF him. You see that a lot when um, in the kernel Linux mailing list of Linus rants is a good subreddit. Is all yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> 
Well, I had a wonderful time. I got had the opportunity to meet him and talk to him privately for about 20 minutes at the Open Source Summit back in uh, 2017. And that was amazing. I got to talk to him about how I first started using um, Linux uh, with the uh, installing the uh, 24 uh, three and a half inch floppy disks of Slackware Linux. And that uh, I I got that. I downloaded it from uh, my brother's uh, Elite BBS back in the day. And Linus was very impressed. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, you were there at the very beginning." <laughs> but he he was. Real, really a nice guy. And I got him, I got a nice picture of him smiling with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think if I ever run across Linus, I'm probably going to talk to him about something he's interested in, like scuba diving. Yeah, he, he does like that. But he was real excited when I started talking to him about the BBS systems. And then also my organization, the Linux Chicks of LA, and how we still do, you know, hands on. Uh, uh, install fest with Linux, and uh, he was really impressed by that because he said most groups of you know are doing online stuff now and aren't aren't doing hands on. So I want to keep that that going with lugs. <laughs> that used to be a thing. Remember lugs? Yeah. Oh, oh and he had heard of Linux Gamecast. I told him I was going to be start. I was going to be a, uh, um, a Linux broadcaster on. Uh, Linux Gamecast, and, and he had heard of us, <laughs> so that was I think, cool. Uh, I think he's just being nice to you, Joe. <laughs> no, he actually <laughs> said he, he knew of a few. Uh, he knew of a few of the podcasters. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying, knowing Linus and how much he loathes gaming. Yeah, <laughs> that, that Publi- is kind of true. It's like publicly has come out. He's like, I have no use for video games. Yeah, but he loves that the fact that the technology has progressed because of Linux gaming. So, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we need to talk about an AMD announcement because that kind of happened earlier this <laughs> week. And um, people were kind of happy about it. I was excited about it. Now, in all fairness, I completely forgot about it. I thought it was maybe next week or maybe it was a week beforehand, but it got posted in our Discord. So I decided, like a lot of you, to sit down and watch. We're talking about the Ryzen 7000 series launch, 7950X and more Woo-hoo. coming not millions of years from now, not a paper launch, but it's coming in September. Pretty neat. Um, this is from Anontech. You can find all the links in the show notes in our show notes. I guess I should have said that. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com if you want that. Couple of things, couple of notes I took away from this. No more 65 watt chips. No more power sippers. A little sad about that. And um, AM5. It's got some power, though. I mean, it can put out as much as 230 watts. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see, like, the first round, I think the maximum TDP on all these chips, about 170 watts. No quad channel memory. That's kind of sad. No 64-lane PCI hotness. A little sad about that, too. You know, I'm kind of hoping, like, maybe some adventurous motherboard manufacturer will split out, bifurcate some PCIe five lanes and, and, like, buy three lanes or something like that. I don't know. Add some extra holes. I love that as an option because you, you got rid of my regular thread rippers. AMD, you did. Here's some good news, though. Your AM4 coolers, they're going to be compatible. They might require a little bit of a spacer plate due to height differences, but outside of that, no big deal. They didn't say whether or not AM4 thermal paste is going to be compatible with AM5 CPUs, so keep an eye out for that. Let's talk about prices, though. Mm-hmm. 299 to 699 That's effectively parity with the last generations released yeah. with your motherboard starting around 120 bucks. Uh, that, that, okay, that's not too bad. Um, I think all in all, it's very comparable to last gen's release. And, you know, yeah. they're, they're getting pretty fast, Joe. Yeah. So, you know, what I think is actually cool and fascinating is that the core counts are the same as the last generation. But AMD actually really focused this time on speed increases as well as as their new AM5 architecture. And uh, wow. So now actually AMD will have better single core performance than Intel. That, that's something they have been trying to achieve for a long time. <laughs> and, it, and it's nice. Ni- nice to see that. That was a pretty big deal. And there's... 
Wow, there's uh, four chipsets are being planned so far. The X670 Extreme, the X670, the B660 Extreme, and the B660. With X70 series boards available for the September launch and the B660 series boards set to follow in October. I'm definitely going to pick up one of the B660 series because <laughs> I already have a 450 and a 550. So <laughs> I go to the next generation. <laughs> It'll be cool. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I don't know, man. I'm feeling a little <laughs> down. I think AMD is getting a little too mainstream. I have to might have to get a CP from that little upstart Intel, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Here's but, the thing, though. The current yeah. generation, what AMD, uh, all this works out on paper, basically, and it's strange, not, not terribly as strange as they were, say, like three years ago. But AMD is just going to own the top end. It's going to mm -hmm. own the high end. Not That's so much in sweet. like the budget builds. Because yeah. some of the i3s and i5s from Intel really are trading below their low end, especially when you look at price performance. And Intel has, uh, for good or for ill, they have uh, DDR4, 5, well, backwards compatibility. Yeah. So, that's you know, true. DDR5's expensive. Prices are coming down, still expensive. Uh, and that's something you can do with the Intel board is it can operate with four or five AMD boards are going to be DDR5 only, which I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal, but that it's been a while. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. We've been running DDR4. You've been able to swap those RAM sticks between boards for years now. And uh, speaking of longevity, they say the stock uh, stock is going to stick around until what? 2035. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Not 2035, 2025. 2025. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> My brain, like dates That's, don't mean anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's because we're getting old, Ben. It's a mixture like of that and the last couple of years. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. And, you know, you got to bring up an AMD announcement because there is a disproportionate amount of uh, Linux users who have just been running AMD since the beginning. Yeah. Since way back when. Like, Maybe it's maybe it's just we all like underdogs. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I got a stack of, and you know, I got like a little wall display of going all the way back to their uh, first two core K six two K six threes. I started with K fives. Ah, okay. <laughs> K five was my first one, and uh, then I had K six. I had K six two. I don't think I had just like regular K six. I went from K five to K six two, and that was like a big jump back in the day. But yeah, <laughs> it it's been a fun ride. And you know what? Uh, sticking with them through even the tough stuff because I bought a bulldozer CPU to support AMD. That <laughs> should have bought an Intel. Like <laughs> Intel would have been a little bit more, but it would have been a lot more performant. I still want bulldozer. You know, I had that eight core bulldozer the, that Jordan has. Now he uses it uh, to heat his living room. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Not even joking. Not <laughs> even joking. That CPU by itself with a Hyper 212 on it will chase you out of a room in about two hours. Mm -hmm. It's dumping that much excess heat. So, Katie and Live has a new version, and I. it's always good to yeah. like. See what kind of new features we got and maybe see if they've updated some things. Yeah. So, yeah, the open source video editor, Kaden Live. It's also known, and for those of you out, out there who don't know, it stands for the KDE Nonlinear Video Editor. And they have a new release, the 22.08 release, which has lots of new features. I mean, a lot of new features in this version. So, rendering now supports an experimental parallel processing feature for faster render speeds. I am looking forward to testing that out. I haven't yet on the rendering. So, and this re release also includes enhancements to Kden Live's proxy clip generation system, which features GPU hardware accelerated NVENC and VAPI proxy clip encoding for better, better previews before you do your final render. That will definitely come in handy. And uh, they debuted a built-in subtitle tool a few releases back, and now it's getting an upgrade with support for basic styling of subtitles. You can now quickly change font family, outline color, font size, shadows, 
and background color and more. And you can even import VTT or web video text tracks and SBV, the YouTube subtitle files into Caden Live now. And, and that's a you know big deal, especially for us content creators. It's a really great addition. And there's lots of new effects as well. I played around with the, the sheer new effect, exposure, color temperature, color over, overlay, and chroma noise reduction, uh, to name a few. And a lot of these are effects that you, you get in, uh, like, say, Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. So it's really nice to see uh, more features added to Caden Live, uh, bringing it even uh, to more professional level than it ever has been. It's awesome. I took the Pepsi challenge. Now good on KD and live team for a long time. They've been offering uh, both a flat pack and an app image, which is brilliant. They even have a yeah. PPA if you're still using the uh, Ubuntu bits. Now, a couple of things that are kind of neat. You know, you can now do the thing. This has been something in DaVinci Resolve for a while, but I'm glad to see it showing up in KD and live is being able to export guides as chapters. If you're wondering what that is, like when you're going through your timeline, you can make little That's chapter nice. marks and just say, hey, at this time, this is what this is. And this time, it's a good way to keep track of your clips and your project. Now, Katie and Live can do a little export and just kind of give you your timestamps that you would need to post in your YouTube. It's not automated, but at least it'll just give it to you. Mm -hmm. Copy that. Yeah. Put it in your YouTube video, your Odyssey video, your Vimeo, whatever. And that'll automatically generate the little spots on the video with the descriptions, which is good. Which is good. Now, uh couple things I always like to check. It, the, I tried the app image for what it's worth. And yeah. <laughs> it's blissfully unaware of any of the multiple pieces of Blackmagic hardware in Thread Booper. Mm -hmm. Doesn't see <laughs> a one, not a one. And um, that's like three different generations and stuff. You know, I have um, Intensity Pro and I have the uh, Quad 4K card and I have a mini monitor. It's like, nope. No black magic devices detected. Might want to take a look at that. And something that we talked about. Something that we talked about. And I, we understand why they do it. You know, you want to default to like 24.95, 25 for that cinematic. Because people are clearly going to be using this for cinema. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But you know, and I know. And I'm saying this constructive criticism. I'm not mocking. I'm not joking. I'm just saying, let's be real. We know 99.99% .99 of the users should be defaulted to 60 FPS because we got game capture or we got something we've captured on our mobile device. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at 60. And when you do import something that, you know, it does give you the option, but it's a little pop-up. It's a little pop-up in the project bin that you could easily miss. So... I'm just saying, like, out of just maybe consider switching that to 60. I think that's your biggest use case right there. Now, something I don't also want to address each and every time, uh, you still have to manually add audio tracks. So we're going to take this video, for example. I'm recording this <laughs> yeah. with OBS. <laughs> I'm recording this in DNX HD 290, and I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five seven audio tracks on this video. With Katie and Live, I'm going to open that. It's going to go into my project bin. I'm going to take that project and drag it to my timeline, which is your normal workflow. Nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> no feedback. No audio track. <laughs> no, nothing. It just yeah. doesn't do anything. And um, there's no feedback there. There's no nothing telling me. I know what the problem is. I can suss it out pretty quick. I'm like, yeah. you're not automatically adding the audio tracks. So if you had to manually go in and, you know, just add, I think by default too. And like, I, I understand, you know, but then you can change that to your default of that. And I'm like, that's not, I don't always edit these shows. Sometimes I just have one audio track. Sometimes I have two audio tracks and I don't need different projects for that. What I need is the detection when I drag that into auto add however many extra tracks that I need so I can leave the default at two because outside of these shows, I'm probably not going to need too much more than that. I'd like to see that. That would be brilliant. I'd be very happy. A um, couple other things. I know I keep talking about it, but I'm talking from a place of love when I say this. Uh, 
that render page, that render page, mm. you know, <laughs> just what I'm used to. I mean, things that like, I, I, I want to see rate control. I want to see look ahead, AQ strength, keyframes, frame reordering, weighted predictions, the ability to limit video bit rate during an export, a separate tab for audio. Because if I'm doing something and I'm exporting H.265, I'm going to be in an MOV container. I might want to be doing 24-bit PCM, or I might want to be uh, IEEE floating point. I want those options. I, I'm never going to be exporting um, like AAC or anything like that. That doesn't fit my workflow. I don't do compressed audio when I'm sending it out somewhere. So yeah. That'd be nice to see. That's my feedback for whatever it's worth. Maybe nothing, but yeah. No, I, I hear you, Vin. I, I have actually wanted more advanced features in the renderer as well. They did reorganize it, which is... is, is it still doesn't make a bit of sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 not it's not like what you're, you're used to in Premiere and DaVinci and Final Literally Cut. Literally any other nonlinear video editor ever yeah. in the entire history of ever. <laughs> That's me being a little snarky, but I mean, it's always been a very confusing layout. I'm sure it makes sense to somebody, but it's just missing some very standard options, and it has been for a long time. Again, I say that from a place of love. Also, I say that as somebody probably makes more content from Linux than anybody else that I know of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it sure has come a long way, though. Caden Live is really, they're doing so many major improvements. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? We have nothing but optimism. Yeah. Nothing but optimism. Always look on the bright side of that. Now, PinePhone's got a bunch of updates. Yes, yes. Well, I shouldn't say PinePhone. Pine64, but everyone knows what I mean when I say yeah. PinePhone. Like, yeah, 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 those guys. And the first one is uh, they've added a fin, a racing fin, <laughs> to their new Risk 5. <laughs> look at that. Look at that double stack stacked on top. Yeah, it's that, pretty amazing. <laughs> that's unique. I saw that and it got my attention. I don't know if it was for the right reason. I was like, what is that? What is that? And we got to, let's take a look. They got the entire update. Bunch of new things going on over at Pine64. A couple of things you want to ring up. Spare parts for the Pine phone are now in stock. So if you'd have broke something, now maybe you can get it fixed. They've updated the SIM tray. There's been a re just a small revision to the Pine, Pine Phone Pro, to which I have to imagine the ladies and gentlemen at Pine64 had to go, really, we got to do this? They had to update the SIM tray. Why? Because people were determined to feed it micro SD cards. Yeah. <laughs> Their life depended on trying to shove a micro SD card in there. So they've, they've kind of made it uh, you proof if you were that person. Okay, they've helped out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> A couple of things, uh, Star 64 prototype, risky business. Nice. With a nice Ooh. double stacked, uh, look at that, HDMI. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and it's even got a PCIe by one spot on it. Risk five goodness, as me and Jill both said, uh, oh yeah, like wireless earbuds, what ifs. Um, <laughs> pine time. A couple yeah. of things added to the pine time. Uh, the One of the issues is uh, people were like counterfeiting the pine soul. Pine yeah. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I meant to say, my bad. That's and okay. <laughs> which I, I I couldn't really figure that out. A couple things they got some new tips, by the way, and they heat up a lot quicker, which is also good. But there's now a web page where you can punch in your um serial number for your pine and find out whether or not it's legit. It's uh make sure it's not a knockoff. Which I was surprised anybody would knock these off, not because they're bad kid, but just because they're like 30 bucks, right? Yeah, they're inexpensive. It's kind of odd. <laughs> it's kind of what I was thinking about that. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, oh, right, right, right. F so for the Risk 5 bit, which I think is what a lot of people are showing up for, they're pretty sure the development on this is going to get pretty quick because it's going to be using... Um, Debian and Fedora have already been ported to the Star 5, which is yeah. going to be using a lot of the same internals architecture-wise. So a lot of that heavy lifting is done. I think that's pretty neat. And yeah, I mean, outside of that, it's got that racing fin with a stacked dual gigabit, I guess we should say, both of the Ether noodle holes and PCI. Did they say anything about the price? 
Mm, I don't. I don't remember what if they did. I don't think they did. I don't think, oh right, and they also have a the blade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing <laughs> which I I don't have a use for that, but it's there if you need it. I think that was about it. I was just most amused by the nano sim slot on the Python Pro. I'm like, man, that's awesome. <laughs> can you just imagine how many complaints you have to get before you do a hardware revision? Because you're not going to do it with one complaint, two complaints, ten complaints. It's going to be like thirty or forty complaints. You're like, we got to redesign this. Why? Because people are people dumb. People keep shoving no. <laughs> the wrong thing in there. <laughs> these, these are the same type of people that have peanut butter instead of their VCR. Don't people have other smartphones that use micro SD? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so, anyways, there's actually also a big update for the Pine Time. There's a new companion app called Watchmate, and this app uh, runs on desktop and mobile Linux and is compatible with uh, the Pine Time running Infinitime. And the UI, honestly, is far easier to use than the other apps available. I had a lot of fun playing with it, and I e even did an OTA firmware update for my Pine Time using it. It was just a, a few clicks and, and very simple. And you can actually install it via Flatpak. So that was nice. And, uh, you know, it already supports many features from Infinitime, such as, you know, setting the time, of course, reading battery level, recording the heart rate value, controlling media player, and uh, the firmware updates. And I just updated it, my Pine Time, uh, with the new Watchmate app, and was so impressed, honestly, with how quickly it did the update as well, because the, the other software that I had used on Android, it seems to be really slow at updating. So this, this is uh, definitely a nice new uh, app to look out for, and they're going to be making it even better and making that user experience for the Pine Time much, much easier. Yeah, I think the Pine Time falls into, again, it's one of those things you could just buy one, buy two, like, hey, yeah. it's something to play around with. And mm -hmm. I think that's something Pine64 has excelled at is Absolutely. these devices at that price, you know, hitting that price, performance price point thing, you know, and more importantly than that, managing expectations. You know, they made it very clear and communicated to the customer, like, I know you're not going to like this word if you're listening to the Pine people, but they're Tinker Toys, which, mm -hmm. that's something, and I, I mean that in a loving way, it's like something yeah. to play with, it's, something, it's what I'd call the original Raspberry Pis, like, they're Tinker Toys, like, you can do cool things with them, but I mean, who knows? Like now, you, know, you see what the Raspberry Pi um, architecture has evolved into, and they're no longer Tinker Toys. Uh, they're backbones to a lot of things. So, looking yeah. forward to more and more and more. Uh, maybe, just maybe. See, I, I want to keep patting everybody on the back because I want a like nice, uh, you know, two K, you know, decent UHD possibly tablet that's fourteen to fifteen inches. Yeah, a new version of the Pine Tab. <laughs> we would love that. And oh, yeah, man. Pine 64 has progressed um, open source hardware and um, as a result, the open source software for, for you know, the Pine Time, the Pine Book, the Pine Phone. I mean, the list goes on and on of the ecosystem, amazing ecosystem that they have created and, and progressed Linux because of it. True. All right, if you want to help us progress ourselves, you can do that by becoming a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. I want to thank each and every one of you lovable miscreants for helping us do what we do, keeping it ad-free with our crazy non-existent business model. If we just give everything away, if you like it, hey, that's mm -hmm. cool. But we do have a couple of bonuses. Like, you know, we're talking about the Trek Media. It's called Linux and Laps. It's one of our pet names for it because it's an excuse for some Linux kids. <laughs> get together and hang out twice a week scheduled adult time with friends or frenemies however you want and there's a bunch of different you know we have our own little subclasses some people are way better than me i'm better than some people and other people like there's you know formula one formula two formula nine yeah. we got it all covered <laughs> but again we're there to have some fun and plus everything's equalized like that but if you're a twitch subscriber 
or Patreon, you get access to our super secret Discord. That's where we're at the other six days a week. Yeah, we were even talking about that last night. I'm like, man, that our chat never stops. It's international. It's mm-hmm. just rocking and rolling, and it's not 100% Linux-based. You don't have to worry. Don't be shy. Don't go, oh, man, I got to talk about Linux stuff. I'm like, no, ah. Uh-uh movies golden girls whatever yeah. you can come up with <laughs> it's going to be taking place but speaking of twitch i want to thank oil of hope nine month resub yay thank you oil of hope bringing yeah, it he, to us he's awesome i enjoy having him in chat too <laughs> and uh what else? we got store stored at linuxgamecast.com cover yourself in lgc merchandise confuse and anger people or your immediate family give it as gifts to make them ask questions and look up about the weird stuff that you watch and buy merch for. That'd be brilliant. Amazon wish lists, all that stuff can be found at LinuxGameCast.com. Smash that support button if you see anything. If not, share the show. Whatever you got going on, just come in and stop in and say hi. We just love that. That's brilliant, too. Now, let's get into a slice of pie. Ah, <laughs> with a, <laughs> a, a pie, or in this case, a cake with a hand on it, because we're going to be talking about handheld raspberry pies. I just like this. This is from Sunshine <laughs> Cake Shop. That's what That's I would awesome. expect from Sunshine. Yeah, it's a bloody it's not... hand on a cake. <laughs> this is something we brought up on our game show Saturday, uh, Linux Teamcast Weekly, but I thought it fit here as well, because there's a new yeah. Linux handheld game console based on the powerful, question mark, Odroid into Plus. This thing's kind of neat. This thing's kind of neat. It's got a bunch of interesting bits in it. Let's take a look at that PCB. And it's blue. Of course it is. It's a yeah. thing of questionable use <laughs> for me anyway. Of course it's going to have some blue in it. And I'm looking at it. You don't necessarily need to worry about this uh, replacing your Steam Deck. You don't. But let me start off with a selling point. And it's not this whacked out USB-C and Type-A cable. No, yeah. no, no. Let me hit you with it. This thing's 111 bucks. Mm-hmm. This thing's, oh, you're out there and just started paying attention. You're like, wait, what? I'm like, right? So what are we looking at? This thing's going to be running 2004, the Ubuntu. Gang of emulation cores, uh, 2600 all, all the way up to 7800 in the Atari, Atari Lynx, Game Gear. Doesn't stop there. Game Boy A, Master System, Mega Drive, NES, PC Engine. You're like, yeah, whatever. Sega CD, okay, PlayStation Portable. Do I get you N64? How about now? What if I told you this thing's got enough juice to do GameCube games? Yeah, because it Woo-hoo. does. It does. Um, two gigabytes of LP, you know, low-power DDR4, quad-core arm, A35, five-inch screen. And, like, oh, you can even do PS1 era gaming on this thing, and it's not ugly. And, of course, you know, since it's uh, Odroid type stuff there's gonna be a ton of 3d printed cases and stuff like that you can just download and play yeah. with uh, i like that clear case it's it's pretty sweet to see the the internals and yeah i mean how can you beat that price that's and it's really nice to see some great alternative linux handhelds coming out you know because of the success of the steam deck the, the, this is you know all, all these companies that have made these before making new ones <laughs> that are even better <laughs> And, you know, to get their niche of the market. And Odroid is is uh, a great platform. They're really it powerful is. and tiny. Something that's been around for a long time. This thing, yeah, it's at that magic price point. $111. Like, if it works, you yeah. you come out ahead. Like, oh, yeah. the power's on. Neat. We're done. But maybe you want something portable like this. Because let's be honest, that Steam Deck, Jill, not the smallest mm-hmm. thing in the world. No, but... I, I like it because it has the bigger screen because I have vision problems. So it could the, be. However, yeah. you could use the Steam Deck in self-defense. I don't think you could use this yes. as self-defense. No. Unless you just really wanted to irritate somebody with it by giving them like Crash Bandicoot to play. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. But for 111 bucks, why not? I know. Uh, I know. Just to tinker with. And, you know, you could hook it up to a monitor. So. Here's the kicker. Yep. This thing's not coming out in 2023, 2024. This thing's going to be available in October. Yeah. To pick up and play with. And you don't <laughs> have to get on a reservation list and wait months and sometimes get it pumped up. I know a lot of people, Steam has bumped up Steam Deck reservations twice now, which I know, mm-hmm. from, I know from personal experience now, two different people that had to cancel because they were expecting it to get their Steam Deck, you know, in January. 
Yeah. Not like after Christmas and I'm like, oh, that's fine. You know what? I'm going to take this money. And I'm going to spend it on like, you know, presents or whatever on myself. I don't have to have that money together until January. And you get an email last week saying Steam Deck's ready to give us a, give us a money. Like, ah, mm-hmm. uh, that, 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 um, that money just got spent. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy I came in. I got mine and I was able to get in June. So I was one of the early uh, first people to one of the early uh, first gen. <laughs> ish. <You got> yours. <laughs> ish. Yeah. 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 Ish. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, I got it was one. A little That's late, what but I'm but saying. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty decent. All right, everyone, that's going to do us running a bit long, but we got to bounce out of here. I wanted to let everyone know about that handheld Linux Absolutely. gaming bit. Curious to see what people come up with. But I need to go ahead and pull up, cue that music, roll the credits. Mm-hmm. Have a great rest of your week. Yeah. I still don't. Oh, yeah, I do. There it is. Ha. I knew I made it. <laughs> oh, we have to thank all our wonderful uh Patrons and viewers of LGC and LWW, our advisors, Omegas and Artharen. Whoop, whoop, Artharen's in the house. Our executive producers, Barbrantz, Scott, Atomic. And yeah, the, this, the credits go by too quickly. I can't read them <laughs> that quickly. <laughs> we got Sea Monsters, Vera Tenuta, System T, David, Darkwing, Frostclaw, Nubbin, and our Death Notes. Lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> and our I other want you to thank each gamers. and every one of those people. 